This is kind of continuing my bad luck with like amplifiers and speakers recently. So it looks like this amplifier died. Thankfully, I, it's, it was still under warranty, so I called Definitive and they sent me a replacement amplifier. So I'm going to go ahead and go over how I uh, replace the amplifier on this thing. This is the uh, my Definitive Technology 9080. It's a center channel. It's got a built-in sub. That's why it needs an amp and a power source down below there. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go over how to replace the amp. So first thing I got to do is remove the screws. Looks like there it's a two and a half, 2.5 millimeter. I'm assuming hex. That's the one that seems to fit. I'll just remove them all. So, I'm hoping this is the issue. Obviously, if the amp wasn't the issue, um, I'll probably have to send the entire uh, center channel for repair. Hopefully, this is the problem. Okay, looks like it comes out pretty easily. Not very big. I just got to figure out what to disconnect. So I went ahead and took a, grabbed my phone and took a picture of these connections so I don't mess them up when I try to reconnect everything. So now I'm just going to go ahead and start pulling some of these because it's all got to come off. Okay, little tip. There's a little tab in this connector I'll try to bring this a little closer. There's a little tab on this connector. I just use the tip of this little screwdriver to just release it because just trying to yank it out wasn't working. So that was the that was the tip. See there's like a little hole there that's probably grabbing onto this little thing. Alright, let's do the next one. Now that I know that little tip, it's gonna should be smoother. Tab there came right off. Took me a second, but I finally got this this red one off. I just had to kind of get into a little. So let me try this last one. Got to get the little um, rubber or vinyl uh, um, insulation thing. There, the amp's out. They claim it's a 300 watt amp, but it isn't feel 300 watts. I have no idea what's wrong with this thing. I actually don't know if it was the amp at all, so this may still be good. So I'm just gonna set it aside and try putting the other amp in. All right, this is how they sent the other amp. So the new amp included the little, um, looks like this is the use of the LEDs that light up the D in front of it. That's the first thing I disconnected from this. Um, pretty cool. The little LED was still lighting up even though the amp wasn't, uh, the sub wasn't working. These looks these go to the speaker terminals. So I'll start with the other ones then. So the red cable goes on this side. Just slip it right on. And then put the insulation back. Always always a good idea to take pictures of what you just did before you go nuts. That way you don't get into trouble. Okay, so now you're going to want to do the striped one on the red terminal. So I'll start with the solid white uh, cable and go to the black or I guess ground, uh, negative terminal. Sorry, I'm just filming all this stuff by myself so I can't, uh, fortunately I can't give you a better view. But uh, I can, so I just put the right the white cable, this is the kind of orange and white, is going to go on the positive side of, or I can even just show you on the old one. This is the old one, I just connected these two here. Um, so I just put the orange and white cable on this red one, and I put the plain, just solid white on the black terminal. 
which connects to the speaker terminals in, uh, over here. Now all I have to do is connect the LED again. Make sure the installation's on. Good. Last connection is the LED. Which again, I'm uh, was lighting up just fine. So if you look, there's a little notch on the connector, and there's a notch on the little plastic connector in the on the amp. You're gonna align them and slide it in. Yep, that's it. Now we just get to put everything right back. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and get I'm gonna just get one in on the the corners here just so it stays in place. You know, I think at this point, and before I put all the screws in, it just might be me, but I'm going to go ahead and test it and make sure that that was the actual, make sure that it's all connected correctly and I'll come back and finish putting all the screws in. Okay, so I just tested it and it works great. Uh, I disconnected all my uh, PP3000s and my BP8080STs and just plugged this guy in and instant like bass, it was, it was awesome. It was uh, pretty good. I mean, this thing has uh, an 8-inch sub. This is a, this is rated at 300 watts, and it has a passive radiator as well. So it's not bad. And I think they kind of thought, let me put a and there's an LFE connector there, and they're probably thinking a lot of people, you might have just one sub in your system. This one, even though it would be in the middle of your room, which not, it's not as um, Probably not as optimal as being in, like, not necessarily a corner, but in the, maybe the, the last quarter. So let's say this is this is your room. Center channel would be in the middle. Corner is here, maybe like in between this, the the midpoint and the corner. That's uh, typically a good position for a sub. But a lot of people. Either for various reasons, they don't want to. You don't want to purchase the second sub. Maybe it's not approved by your significant other. So this is a viable option. It's built in, and you can still plug in and get a little more extra bass in your room, and nobody would ever know that, that the bass is coming from the center or that extra. And it's actually pretty, pretty surprising. I remember when I bought this thing. First of all, I could set my center channel for. Uh, to run at full range instead of having a set of crossover of like 180 or 100 hertz, and I I could tell the dialogue. You could hear like the uh, the deep, like spe specifically with the you know uh, maybe with men's voices, you hear that nice deep, like a Josh Brolin voice, and it was very clear. Um, so that's it. It's done. It's working great, and yeah. Amplifier was bad, and I hope this helps out anybody who has any issues. I should also mention that I haven't, didn't have any issues with Definitive. It did take like four months to get the part because they didn't have it in stock, probably due to COVID and all that stuff. Uh, but they eventually did send it to me, and uh, for at no charge. Other than the weight, it was a great experience. Before I wrap it up, I just wanted to mention that the reason how I figured out I was uh, that the that the amp was bad was that. I would occasionally, if I did something to my theater, I would run and rerun the, the auto EQ on the receiver. And for some reason, I noticed late last year that when it was setting the center channels to small, when, it, when I bought this thing, it was setting it to large. In other words, full range. And not only that, it was setting this to small and it was kind of like bringing the receiver to want to set, set the crossover for the entire system to 150 when in the past it would set most of the speakers to large in my room. Then I just like connected an LFE cable directly to this and there was absolutely no bass and I just found the bassiest movie that I could find and there was like nothing. Then, then I called Definitive and they kind of said, oh, it's gotta be the amp. Let me, we'll send you a new amp. I got this, the box maybe about a week ago and I finally got around to doing this. So again, took a while, but great, uh, good service. And understandably due to all the global issues going on right now with supplies and all that stuff. But yeah, 
great. I'm glad it's all fixed and awesome. If you can like and subscribe, that would be great. And comment if you have any questions.